Just thank you to the gallery and just how beautifully you have hung my work. Um, makes me really proud to see it up like this. And, and then also just a thank you to my support network, largely Alistair, and then my other artist friends, my family, and the greater community who have come today. So thank you. Helen Warren was going to be the opening speaker, but with family emergency, she couldn't. So she apologized profusely. So I'm going to use some of her words. And her talk is up there if you'd like to have a look at it. Um, as I look around this room, all of us masked up and sanitized, it's clear that this has been a weird year, weird year. Weirder than Donald Trump's tan lines or Melania's taste in men, or the fermented fish I saw the other night on a travel show about Norway. So about four years ago, I moved to Komiki and it literally, saved my life. It was one of the significant decisions in my life. I was able to immerse myself in the natural environment because I just found myself feeling lower and lower in, in the city and desperate to be closer to, to nature. Um, so that opportunity of walking on the beach twice a day, sometimes three times a day, just gave me the chance to really immerse myself in nature. And so as I was walking like along the beach, which is you know, pretty close, um, I could sense more and more of the impact that the water has had on me, I've, I've felt, and I, I don't think it's just an esoteric sort of thing, so I started researching it, and most of us, I think, may know that moving water creates negative ions, and because our bodies are actually a magnetic field, we positive and negative ions, and made even more positive and worked up by the impact that our environment has on us. It's cell phones, technology, devices, microwaves, TV, and that ups the positive um, charge of your body, actually. So the moving water creates negative ions, and that helps to reduce this charged body that we can be sometimes. And I've been reading more and more about, again, this impact of uh, of nature, of which water is a huge, huge part. When you see the planet from a distance, I don't think any of us have, but when you see photographs of it, it's blue, and there's a reason why it's blue. Um, so today, we've got technology, we've got the fourth industrial revolution, we've got this internet of things, which is amazing in certain ways, terrifying in others, and we sort of hope that these, I hope that these incredible advances in technology is not going to cost us our humanity because it's disconnecting us from the natural world where technology can actually enable the opening up of our understanding of the natural world. So I find it quite distressing that over 50% of the global population now lives in cities and by 2050, it's going to be about 70%. So it's this complete disconnect from the natural world. So in order to connect ourselves with ourselves, connect back to our senses, we do need to try and, I mean, I'm not lecturing at all, but I, I think it's really important that we go for a walk in this most beautiful city in the world, <laughs> or walk to the beach, or do something that enables us to take on what nature provides. Um, a very dear friend of mine was, not so recently, a number of years ago, um, had chronic depression, and she was on really hectic medication, seeing a psychiatrist, seeing a psychologist, um, but it wasn't helping. So she went to see her GP, her GP sent her to Sangoma, whose script for her was to bathe every morning in this pool in Newlands Forest. And she said that, um, her word, she said, it's the best medicine I've ever had. The healing process was inexplicable. And it's there even all the time, even when leaving the forest. So she said, nature's healing properties are an open secret and accessible for everybody, rich or poor. To go back to Helen's words, humans have always been drawn to water and particularly the sea. Perhaps we are being called back as scientists claim humans kind evolved from a bag-like sea creature that had a large mouth, no anus, and wriggled around. She says, like a lot of politicians we might know. <laughs> when we're in the ocean, whether it's floating around in the shallows or diving its depths, a weightless calm envelops us. And this was also something that my friend who was bathing in the pool in Newlands also said, as if you just got this duvet around you. So it's this weightless calm as though the lines between where our bodies end and begin dissolve a little and we can surrender to that calm space between waking and dreaming. 
It resonates with that place inside us that is still wild and can still read the braille of the natural world. It brings to the surface a yearning to return home. And so to close, <laughs> there's a, a line from a poem by E. E. Cummings. The last line says, um, whatever you lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we'll find in the sea. There you go.